Hello guys, this is Mike from mcprogramming.org and I'm going to continue from this last tutorial where, well I'll just show you what we have. Okay, application. Alright, so we have this little thing called my app and it has a uh, J label and a J button within this J panel right here which is the light gray and then we have a J uh, text area below it where we can write if we want. Well, doing the button and typing is is not getting anything done. So we need to make this a little bit better. And we want to give functionality to this button. And so I'm going to introduce you to event handling. And for this particular instance with this one class, just frame, I could think of three ways to create um, an action listener. And what an action listener is, is it sits and waits and listens for an event to happen. And an event would be uh, clicking a button, for instance. And when that button is clicked, uh, it fires some type of um, response or, you know, it fires an event. And whatever you code that event to be happens. So in this case I want to click the button and I want some type of text to appear in the text area. So let's get it started. First off when we run this this stuff is just kinda in the middle ugly. Let's I can show you how to create a new layout within a section of um, the Java Swing application. So I set the whole thing to a border layout. So the J panel is in the north, and the text area is in the center, which actually takes up the rest of the box because there is uh, no south, no east, no west. But let's say that I wanted in J panel to set a different type of layout. What I could do is set a flow layout and I can either push this to the right, push it to the left, and in this case that's pretty much our only options. But let's do that. I'll just I'll just push all this to the left. Um, and to do that we need to make sure we say panel dot set layout. If you say set, set layout, it'll kind of override this layout right here. And we're going to say new, and we want to say flow layout. And in this uh, parentheses right here, this constructor, we want to say where or how we want to use flow layout. So we're going to use a static reference to flow layout dot, and then we have these things center leading, left, right, trailing. So let's see, this value indicates H row should be justified to the leading. Okay, well left and leading are very, very similar. Uh, I'm just going to say left. But let's see what happens now when we run this code. Okay, so everything has been moved to the left. Uh, I like that a little bit better. Um, still not pretty, but it'll do. So that's a little lesson on how to use layouts within other containers or other, um, yeah, other containers or panes, um, panels, content panes. There's quite a few different things you can use as a container, but I'm going to show you how to use different layouts within different things. And now let's, I'm going to show you how to use an action listener. So we are going to say button dot add action listener. I'll type that out. And we are going to instantiate the action listener right here. So we're going to say new action listener. And go on the outside of that uh, last parentheses and we're going to do quotation or uh, brackets and just do the first bracket and hit enter and that will automatically close that for you and now what we need to do is we probably need to import yeah import 
java.awt.event. Okay, and now we're going to need to implement some methods, or one method. And let's say add unimplemented methods. So there's just one, and we can get rid of all of this stuff. Uh, so the action performed, it will listen for when this button is pressed, and then it will do this code right here, which is action performed. And we don't really have a parameter for a button necessarily, but some instances when we use event handling, we will need um, set these parameters. And I don't, I don't like the way R zero looks kind of ugly. So conventionally, you can put E or EV or even event. I just use E, but we won't need that right now. What we want to do is write to this text area. So you've learned that if you want to print to the console, it's system.out.println. But we can't print line to the text area. The way we do this is we want to do something called append. And that will append or write something to the text area. So I want to call text area and say dot append. And you can append a string. And let's just say I click the button. Okay. So now when I run this code, it should append this to the text area. Let's see what happens. Save everything and we're gonna run it. Okay. So right now it's just uh appending it back back to back. It's not very pretty. Um so we can do this, we can put backslash in, which is an escape sequence for a new line. And so it should it should append this text right here and then go to the next line. So every time we press the button, it will uh, it will be in a line this way, a vertical line, instead of repeating itself. There we go. So now we know how to have a button click and have some type of action listener. And I just showed you one way to create this action listener. Another way, um, I'm gonna keep. Uh, I'll just comment this out actually. I don't want to get rid of it just yet. Alright, so down here we can write an inner class. Now to write a or create an action listener um, as an inner class, what we can do is say private class and we can create um, any name we want. We'll just say button listener because that's what it's doing. And we need to implement the action listener. So implements action listener okay and open and close some brackets and if you remember up here we added an action listener and created a new action listener and we had to implement the unimplemented methods which was just this action performed so let's see what happens when we create this private class first we need to go here and we need to say add unimplemented methods bam we have the exact same thing right here so let's do whoops. Didn't mean to delete that line. Why is this giving me a problem? Move about modifiers. Alright, well, let's have the class, I guess. And now what we can do is say text area dot append I clicked the button and remember to do the new line or else it's going to be ugly ah, I know why this isn't working let me say private class but we want to put it out of here. Okay, there we go. So there's a proper 
inner class right there. Uh, I never do it this way, so it was a little bit, um, had to jog the old memory. I usually do it this way that we did up here, but this is a way of writing a, a inner class, and it says private class button listener, and that implements the action listener. So every time that button listener, um, class is called, we do the same thing. So now what we can do is say button dot add action listener just as before, but now we have a uh, a new button button listener we can add. So a new button listener. Okay, so let's see if this works. This is very similar to the last one. I like writing it the way I did um, up here, but this is another way of doing it, and I'm doing it both ways because some people prefer the other. I'm trying to give you a good overview of how everything works. So there we go. They both work the same. So thank you for watching, and keep watching the GUI tutorials. I'm not going to get too in-depth, but I do want to give you a good overview of how to structure um, you know, visual applications, desktop applications, Java Swing, graphical user interface, whatever you want to call it. So thank you for watching.